WRTR Real Talk Radio. Featured guest DJs, original shows, the hottest DJs from around the world. It's always Black History Month here on WRTR Real Talk Radio, Nigars. That's mm. right. The R's here are harder than BBC's, bitch. We back. Hello. <laughs> How's it what going? A wild intro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you like it. You like it. Uh-huh. Mm. I'm on top of the world after, you know, Miss Lyric Bravado's single came out. Yeah. I'm so excited and I'm so pleased and so proud of that. I saw so mine next week. Do you? Okay. Drop, drop it in the trash. I'm doing what else? <laughs> I'm doing the Beyonce. I'm dropping two singles. Wow. Well, right. At the same time. Mm. What, what's the name of the title? And it's, and it's Jazz. Mm. I'm doing jazz. <laughs> it's one is yeah. called get one is called give me all of you. Mm, no, that I believe oh, that's oh, lyric. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> that is Miss Lyric joint. <laughs> what you want to do? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> find <laughs> out. <laughs> so how's it feel to be back on your in your uh solo element, Miss Lyric? It feels great. I'm getting so much positive feedback. So many people are, have been supporting it, sharing it, liking it, commenting it, listening to it. And what made me most proud was that my oldest son, who's 20 in college right now, mm-hmm. he texted me and he was like, yo, mom, I listened to your song. That joint is fire. Aww. And for him to be able to say yes. that, and I know he ain't just saying that because I'm, I'm his mom, but mm-hmm. for him to be able to like play that as a 20 year old, that to me means I have something classic you that can have. go all across the board to all generations, ages, whatever the case may be, can listen to it and enjoy it. So I that's agree. what I'm most proud of. Hey. I'm most and proud of And the next you. one's dropping next month. All so. right. All right now. Now it's coming. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, friends. So what did we learn black this week other than our own black selves? Miss Lyric, you say you wanted to go first? Yes, I do want to go first. And keeping in the theme of Valentine's Day week, mm-hmm. I am going to say this one. And I did not know this. A lesser known black wedding tradition involved crossing tall wooden sticks to represent both the life force within trees and the first two pieces of wood the couple will use to build their home together. The tradition represented the couple's hope for a strong and stable union. So I did not know that. I know that um, they jump over like the broom. I knew that Mm -hmm. was the tradition, but I did not know about the crossing of the tree limbs at... um, at weddings Mm. but if you think about it but if you think about it the whole arch that they have Mm -hmm. isn't that indicative see y'all be stealing everything from niggas (laughs) 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 okay i cannot i'm sorry (laughs) (laughs) that's what i learned black i did not know that so now you guys know that yes this week i learned a simple quote by james baldwin that like kind of resonated with me so i want to share it with y'all for those of you that may be unfamiliar james author baldwin was an american writer and civil rights activist known for his work throughout essays novels plays and poems so i read this quote of his this week and it says to be african-american is to be african with no memory and american with no privilege Mm. that like whoa like I mean, because we saw that don't this morning. know about our lineage because it's been stripped of us. Yeah. And then the whole thing about, you know, American with no privilege, they don't want it. Like, it's so weird. And that just, it was like one of those ding moments for me. So, yep. And now I got to share that with you all. Mm-hmm. Take a man. I love that. What I learned black was... Joseph H. Rainey, representing South Carolina, became the first.
first African American to be sworn into the United States House of Representatives on December 12th, 1870. Damn. 1870. Mm. Wow. Or it, it was dangerous to be outside a nigga. <laughs> well, I mean, shit, it's still that now. Never mind. <laughs> wow. Yes. All righty. Well, thank you for sharing, y'all. I guess we're going to keep the show moving right along if it were lyric. Up next, right here on WRTR, Real Talk Radio. I'm gay. Of course they're going to act like they don't fuck with me, but want to fuck with me. I'm gay. Of course when I come around, the straight boys going to pull their pants up or have them down all day. And when I leave there, I pull them down again. I'm gay. Of course I'm from a small town where everybody know me. I'm gay. Of course I do not go to Atlanta for Martin Luther King weekend. I'm gay. Of course I do not hang with a lot of gay people. I'm gay. Of course. I am not part of a gay family. I'm gay. Of course you're going to see me with females. And neither one of them know none of my business. I'm gay. Of course I'm going to be in every hood. Because my face good in every hood. I'm gay. Of course I can stand 10 toes down if I'm by myself and there's 10, 15 people. I don't give a fuck. I'm gay. Of course I will fuck your daddy, your brother, your uncle, your nephew, your son. Not in the same day. Same week though. I'm gay. Of course your man gonna look at me. Cause I'm something to look at. I'm gay. Of course. If we lock eyes, that's a sign to me. I'm gay. Of course, I do not do nails, makeup, lashes, none of that. Hell, I'm just here for the good times. I'm gay. Of course, I dress like a boy. I'm gay. Of course, I got feminine ways. I'm gay. I'm gay. Of course I can be a top or a bottom. I'm gay. Of course I don't have more than one or two people in the bed at one time. I'm gay. Of course I do not keep up with the Joneses when I got J.J. Evans money. Good time, anytime you need them, baby. I'm gay. Of course I'm single because these people be playing out here. I'm gay. Of course, I'm from a small town where the DL men get exposed. But not by me, though. By the ones they chose. I'm gay. Of course, I would never be a lady, though. I'm gay. Of course, I have cheated before. I'm gay. Of course, I've been to a drag show. Never did drag, but I don't judge. I'm gay. Of course I can see it in somebody else. <laughs> Maybe not what you should do, but definitely she would. If it were lyric. Hello, lovebirds, and welcome back to the segment, which I love to call If It Were Lyric, where I talk about all you guys' situationships, friendships, relationships, and everything else in between. If you guys want to continue sending me your advice, questions please send them to my gmail at lyric bravado or dm me on twitter instagram or facebook at lyric bravado as well Mm. let's go ahead and get started did you guys Mm. have one or do you want me to go first um let me get mine out of the way (laughs) all right it says dear lyric and dear is like two e's so it's like you know an animal so dear Mm. lyric thank you for that um, my sister-in-law on my wife's side stayed a week and a half. <laughs> stayed a week <laughs> and a half. Ago. Mm-hmm. My sister-in-law on my wife's side. What? Uh, stayed a week and a half with us in Florida. I loved her very much, and we all had a lovely visit. Oh, so she has stayed with us before, alone, and with my brother-in-law. We've been welcoming them with open arms. Family means a lot to us. Now to the problem. After she left. I found an envelope with a thank you card and $200 in it. I feel insulted as they are always welcome here. We are not a B&B. 
uh, this is the first time something like this has happened. We have a nice home, but my wife was complaining about money issues in front of our company. We were all going through a rough patch at the moment, but we are not broke or destitute compared to us. My in-laws are wealthy. My ego is bruised. We are, bu- uh, we are better off than most people and are blessed with what we have. <clears throat> I want to send the money back with a gracious thank you note, but my wife says no. I'm angry with her as well. Was she out of line for not keeping our money situation private? Signed, Flo from Florida. <laughs> I guess see what, he, <laughs> see what he did there. Go ahead. I can see, I can see, you know what I'm saying, how you could feel that way. She probably didn't think anything of it because it was family. But at the same time, I don't think there's anything wrong with you keeping it. Because why would you block your blessing like that? Regardless if she said it or not, they could have still left it. Would it have been a problem if she wasn't complaining about money issues? Sometimes you got to think of, think different ways. Sometimes people are actually trying to be gracious and really just thanking you for your hospitality. It doesn't mean that you have to take it as an insulting thing. Just take it as a blessing. You know what I'm saying? Like times are hard and regardless of... You guys' financial situation, you say that you're comfortable and everything is fine. People still have to pay for things. You know, food's not free. Electricity's not free. Water's not free. None of these things are free. You still have, it's still a bill. So just take it as a, as a simple thank you. I think you're looking too deep into it and don't be mad at your wife for that. You know what I'm saying? You could just have a simple conversation if you want to keep y'all financial and um stuff within you guys then just tell her you know what i'm saying i'm pretty sure she didn't do it to get fucking money like come on now (laughs) that's that's family you know what i'm saying i mean some people do it but it doesn't seem that way from what you wrote i think you're looking too deep you need to take a chill pill and uh, put that money towards something nice Hmm. that's my opinion well all right that's my opinion all right let's see now this one oh my god y'all oh no here we go (laughs) let's hear this one is anonymous okay of course of course it is all right this one says hi lyric i am a 20 year old male my who's dating uh my girlfriend who is 19 My girlfriend is from Finland, where sauna culture and nudity is way different here in the United States. She's living with her parents, who are first-generation immigrants, and wanted to build wanted a built-in sauna in their house, which I thought was so cool. I personally Mm -hmm. never tried an authentic Finnish uh, sauna until last night, and well, yeah, it didn't go that well. I'm not okay. used to seeing the opposite sex naked in a non-sexual situation. So my dick got hard while we were oh. doing the whole oh. sauna thing. I noticed that she wasn't happy with it. Oh. Because she started getting passive aggressive. But today she opened up and said I'm it's sure she did. Respectful. Oh, my bad. <laughs> she said it's really disrespectful towards her culture. And you just can't be getting a boner at a spa or mixed sauna. I'm not really sure how to navigate this because it doesn't seem like a big deal to me. But she thinks it is. <laughs> I'm sure she does. Wow. We were utilizing my wow. girlfriend's parents' home sauna for the first time, by the way. And my dick got hard because I'm not used to seeing the opposite sex in a non-sexual setting. Um, oh. For clarification, it was just me and her in the sauna. Please help. I don't want her to be mad at me. Okay. <laughs> you need to tell her to fucking relax. <laughs> relax and First breathe. Minute, nobody controls their... Well, nobody controls their fucking boners. Like, that is a body's natural fucking response. If you're 12, uh, yeah. sir, calm down. Come on. Calm down, sir. Come on. Mm -mm, I don't like it. Come on. (laughs) Y'all motherfuckers dicks be hard when y'all wake up for no fucking reason. That's in the morning. That's in the morning. So what? It might have been in the morning where they did the sauna. Oh, (laughs) no. Well. 
it's a natural response, honestly. Yeah, you like you better learn how to control it. Come on, yeah. Come on now. Learn how to control your home. And and then it's and it's him and his girlfriend. That's his whole girlfriend. Like Yeah, so I mean, why should it even matter? No, I, she what she needs with. to understand is what her co- he, he what she her be lucky. She be that's lucky her culture, turned on. not his. You know what I'm saying? She can't be getting okay if he was if he was trying to fuck her in the song, and that's exactly. one thing. You know what I'm right. saying? That's disrespectful. But if his body just had a natural response of him being a, a physically attracted to his girlfriend, girl, sit your ass down somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just have several seats in that sign about you. <laughs> what you say? Exactly. Because that's ridiculous. Might I don't think wait there was until anything after. disrespectful. But All hey, right. you know, I'm just have trying to get her bubble on, on, and he running around putting <laughs> people's eyes out and stuff. Who you know? am I? Because I don't have a dick, mm. so I don't mm. know. <laughs> All righty. So this one is coming from Miss Kentucky. Gross. Miss Kentucky. Okay. Dear Lyric, I am an enga- I am engaged to an amazing guy. We have been together a little more than two years. Dur- during our first year, his family was great to me. They acted as if they liked me. However, things changed. When my fiance and I are around them, they just wave and have a little to say to me if they say anything at all. They've never called or texted me. I'm always the one to do it first. Several times when I've texted they haven't replied my fiance is very supportive he tells me things will get better and tries to make me feel better about it but i'm starting to get the impression that they don't like me mm-hmm. also i don't feel i have anything in common with his mother and sister which makes me feel even more awkward i have tried to be friendly and to nurture a relationship with them but i'm getting no effort in return if you have any advice please share mm-hmm. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> well, what say you, Miss Lyric? Oh my God! I, I mean, <laughs> if it was you, girl, how would you act? For me, <laughs> if it were me, I wouldn't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be clear, because you're marrying into the family, but that's not your family. Your family is your husband. You got to spend the rest of your life with him. Right. You have to see him Monday through fucking Sunday. Ooh. You go see them mm-hmm. sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> you have to deal with them. So sometimes you're going to have to figure a way out. Uh, out not a way out, my bad. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, you, well, I mean, if it gets to that point, girl, <laughs> figure a way out. But you're going to have to figure out a way to, like, navigate these things. Like, when you're around them. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's not going to like everybody, and that's family included. Whether it be in-laws or immediate in your family. I'm pretty sure you have cousins who don't fucking like you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They're still your cousins. Yes, still Those are still cousins. your in-laws. They don't have to share the same interests as you. They don't have to like you personally. Honestly, if they tolerate you enough to even wave, that should be enough. Like, if you want to step out there and you know what I'm saying, try to cultivate some type of relationship with them. I mean, and try inviting somebody to lunch. Have a brunch at your house. Mm-hmm. Do things like that inviting things you know what i'm saying but if they carry you in your own house Ooh. baby <laughs> fuck it's em. a problem it's a fuck problem em. don't take shit from no fucking body nobody because nobody has the right to make you feel less than especially if it's your fiance's fucking family like no Mm-mm. that's not cool mm-hmm. so oh, okay. Formulate that if on, on your own will if you choose to. But me, if it were me, I wouldn't give two shits. Because I'm, I'm living with this man. I'm not married to you. Right. Period. Mm-hmm. All right. Next okay. Day. And I have one more. Okay. And this is from Stacy. Okay. Dear Lyric. Mm-hmm. 
Dear Larry. It's like, no. Dear Larry, <laughs> I've always been close to my children, but now that they are adults, it seems I'm losing my connection with one of them. He married a girl of a different race, and while that doesn't bother me, I have a strong hunch she's the reason he has distanced himself from not only me, but also the rest of the family. <laughs> when, I <re> when I recently shared with him that I felt his wife is a bit of a busybody and have overstepped some boundaries, he told me he no longer wants a relationship with me. I don't think I said anything so bad that he totally removed himself from mine in our lives, but I'm no longer what? going to try to force... Huh? Uh, no, go ahead. Oh, just... okay. <laughs> <laughs> So no, I'm just, I was trying to figure out, I don't think I said something that was so bad. Like, girl, I hate oh, your wife. You. Like, what? <laughs> hey. I don't think I said anything so bad that he totally removed himself from my or our lives, but I'm no longer going to try to force him to be a part of this family. After I blocked his wife from social media because she doesn't interact, but stalks and then reports back to him, he has blocked me. <laughs> I'm usually good at dealing with conflict, but he's steadily drawing further and further away. I love all my children, but he needs to realize it's not all about his wife. We're his family too. I really need help with this one. Girl, like I said previously. <laughs> <laughs> Are you the same person? What's happening? <laughs> Because it sounds like y'all got something in common. I'm not. Contact. Listen, it may sound harsh mm. to people that are listening, but listen, I'm not chasing nobody who don't want to be in my space. I'm not chasing nobody who doesn't mm. value me <laughs> as a person. I'm not chasing nobody who's not going to love me the way that I deserve to be fucking loved. It don't matter who it is. Breathe. At some point. You did your job as a mom. You raised mm -hmm. him to the man who he is. You you and you gave him those values. You shape you helped shape his character. You did your job. Let him branch out. The baby bird got to get out the motherfucking nest. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Period. So yes, it may hurt. Yes, your feelings might want to tussle with him. But guess what? Life moves on. You have other kids <laughs> that you can turn that energy to. Those, the ones that's respectful, you know what I'm saying? Ones that's going to love you, you know what I'm saying? Interact with you, have a relationship that wants to have a relationship with you. Focus your energy on that. Why are you chasing somebody who obviously does not want the attention that you seek? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make mm -hmm. any difference. Like people got to really stop wasting their energy on mundane things and people. You're wasting your time. You're only going to upset yourself. Set yourself up for failure and hurt families. Message. Move on. Move on. Life got to keep going whether you, you know what I'm saying, want it to or not. Life's going to keep pushing. Yep. So, that's all I got to say this week. You guys tune in. Once again, like I said, send me your advice questions to my Gmail at lyricbravado at gmail.com and also DM me on Twitter, Instagram, and my Facebook. Later. All right. We're trolling with Ticket Man. Up next. Let's say that during a moment of passion with your partner, you have a momentary lapse in judgment and you don't use protection. Maybe you use protection and there was some sort of accident. Maybe you look down and a condom stuck to your thigh instead. Either way, emergency contraception, aka the morning after pill, is a great option for avoiding pregnancy. The morning after pill prevents pregnancy by temporarily blocking the ovary from releasing an egg. It's typically effective for at least five days after intercourse, but the sooner you take it, the better. And one of the most important things to note about the morning after pill is that it may not be effective for everyone. And weight can be a factor. Some pills are ineffective for women over 170 pounds, which is the average size of a woman in the U.S. Now, there are other options for people who may not be compatible with Plan B, but that's something you should discuss with your health provider, friend. And as always, stay freaky, but stay safe. I love y'all. If it's on your timeline, he's already seen it. Time to troll with Tigger Man. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to a new segment of Trolling with your boy, Tigger Man. Now, when I say trolling, I'm trolling social media for celebrity gossip, 
international news, local news, and what's going on in your bedroom. Why you laughing? Why you laughing? <laughs> I was trying to give you sound effects. You missed Why it. You <laughs> <laughs> he was saying, he said, you trolling with your boy, took him in all of her was oh, wow. I'm sure, all I'm saying, <laughs> Like, what is this? Y'all are stupid. Y'all are stupid. Okay. I hate it. So anyway, okay, so I first have Cardi being all set. Oh, well, no. Um, I guess we all trying to figure out are they back together or not? Oh. Because over um Valentine's Day, they um spent together. Did you say Valentine's? Yes, Valentine's. Oh, okay. Valentine's. I didn't say times. I said times. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> but anyway, she spent Valentine's Day with her estranged husband offset. Mm-hmm. Um, down to some place called Carbone in, in Miami Beach. <laughs> Carbone. <laughs> Are they back together or not? Only yeah, Carbone so, knows. Right, exactly. <laughs> mm, what happens in the bone yeah. stays on yeah. the bone. <laughs> so People's trying to figure out are they back together or not. They're not saying they are, but of course they were spotted spending time on Christmas and New Year's. Gross. And now they just spend time again on Valentine's. I hate it. Day. So I they should get back together. That's I that I hate I, they it. probably yeah. back together. They probably Ooh. back together. Ooh. But anyway, good luck to them. <laughs> Next we have up uh, Russell Simmons. Lord. He is being accused of raping and harassing a former Def Jam executive. Jesus. In a, in a new lawsuit. They're taking all y'all favorite niggas out. Yeah. <laughs> one by one. They just can't keep their penises to themselves. I'll say alleged, allegedly. Uh, allegedly. Well, allegedly, anyway, I feel violated. Uh, Shit. Uh, uh, I, these poor women. Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. And men. It's not even... uh. Yes, no. this is the uh, um the woman who is who is going by Jane Doe <laughs> says she visited his apartment to go over the editing of a video. She says while there he did a wrestling move on her, pinned what? her to the ground and raped her. No, <laughs> Larry, yes. you can unmute your mic. Are you just like hollering? Like what is that? I think she's crying, laughing. Uh, no, but. <laughs> She claims just... she claims he begged she begged him multiple times to let her go, but she couldn't break free because of his weight. <laughs> this isn't the first time he's been accused of a sexual assault. <laughs> Jesus. What is going on with these celebrities? Apparently uh, WWE. WWBBC. <laughs> Jesus. I don't know what the fuck y'all is going on. Wild. Get it together. Get it it's together. Awful. I hate it. Uh, right. <laughs> I'm not laughing at the rave. I'm laughing yeah, at your like, ass one. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just, this is ridiculous. WWE is. moves. Yep. And then, oh, there's penis. Yep. Oh, like, you just, <laughs> y'all are just weird. Take out, the, crazy. take them down. All of yes. these daggone rapists. They got to mm. go. I'm it's all ridiculous. about black people, but this is ridiculous yes. for some of these mm-hmm. moguls. <laughs> all right. Next one uh, up is uh, Miss Kelly Rowan. <laughs> oh no, what did Kelly so do? So Kelly Rowland is not with not the a damn thing. She is not with the foolery on her current press run for her new oh, movie okay, called Men Um, according according <laughs> um, Kelly was scheduled to guest host the Today's show with um, Hoda Cobb but I think that's how you say her name um, oh, wow. <laughs> but backed out at the last minute because her dressing room was reportedly too small. <laughs> on Thursday, Kelly appeared as a guest on the Today Show to discuss her movie during the 8 a.m. slot. Then at 10 a.m., she was reportedly supposed to join Hoda as a guest host for the next hour. Um, but it was said that she and her team were too dissatisfied because of the room that she um, they put her in was too small. Mm-hmm. So they got mad and dipped out before the 10 a.m. show ever started. <laughs> wow. Kelly and her team wasn't happy. Uh, it was said that the room she requested, J-Lo was in it. <laughs> oh. Oh, y'all tried it, it now. Was, the, yeah, the room that she requested was occupied by J-Lo. She ain't no diva. <laughs> Certainly ain't. So Kelly, <laughs> so, so, so 
So Kelly wasn't with the shits. So her and her team dipped out and said, fuck it. I'm out. <laughs> and you can't give me what I want. I'm out. <laughs> that oh God. Perfect. I love it. Now your boy DJ Kelly. <laughs> this oh. fool was riding around in a golf cart. <laughs> around I guess where he lived, down riding down the streets in a golf cart. And then wow. where he lived. And he got pulled over by a cop. <laughs> in the golf cart. In a golf cart. It was, it, the, um, we don't know exactly why he got pulled over, but it said mm. that he ain't had no shoes on. Okay. He had a phone in his hand, so I don't know if he was texting or talking on the phone, and he ain't had no kind of seatbelt on, and he driving down the street, and this golf cart chilling. And so, he got pulled over. And I'm pretty sure they gave him a little citation or something. And plus, golf course, I mean, you don't, you're not supposed to be riding down the street in the golf, um, golf cart anyway. You only okay. use those in the little the little neighborhood you live in and on the golf course. Any so excuse. His, yeah. Sure. So his mm-hmm. ass got pulled over. <laughs> they said he was looking like Fred Flintstone. Mm. <laughs> now that would have been a sight. <laughs> okay. Next up is Kanye West. Oh, wow. Kanye yeah, West is right. firing back at Taylor Swift fans who are who? trying to Taylor uh, Taylor Swift. Who? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> So Kanye is firing back at Taylor Swift fans who are trying to block him from a top spot on the music charts, telling him he's not an enemy, though not exactly a friend either. Here's the deal. This is what happened. So the Taylor um, Swift fans are called Swifties. Bro. Swifties are calling on other Swifties to buy and stream Beyonce new country music to block Kanye new music from getting to the top spot on the Billboard Hot 100s. <laughs> Kanye seen the Swifties emergency on social media and now he's firing back and making some interesting um, counterpoints. Ye says Swifties shouldn't be coming after him because in his mind, he's been far more helpful than harmful to Taylor's career. Mm. Kanye builds in Wednesday post a job with mm. what he's rapped about before, namely, I made that bitch famous. What? <clears throat> <clears throat> Wow. So he he said he made her famous. <laughs> That's well, why she is where she is now. <laughs> I mean... Hmm. What you think about that lyric? Do you think he made her famous? Hmm. <laughs> I think the glare says it for itself. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> hmm. But yeah. Mm-hmm. I still don't know who you're talking oh, about. Clouds. Mm. <laughs> clouds. That's the Lulu land. Clouds. <laughs> Lulu land. But mm-hmm. yeah. But yeah, I saw their post though that um the Swifties posted about Bro. um everybody buying um Beyonce's um streams. <laughs> Has nothing to do with the fact that. that the woman is actually talented. No, Sailor. That's your that's your end. You're the person that's untalented and people buy your music for, you know, pol- whatever, white reasons. But yeah, Beyonce's mm-hmm. the talented one. Just okay. So mm-hmm. here was, here's another one. Remember um, that lady who was claiming she was trying to act like she was black, but she really wasn't. Everybody found out she was white. Yeah, um, Rachel Ra- Dozel Rachel, or whatever yes. her name is. Rachel Dozel. Yeah, she used to be an ex um, NAACP um, behavior. Yeah. We talked about her on this but show. Anyway, she she back in the news because she got back and she got she just recently got fired from a teaching job she had in Arizona because they found out that she um had an OnlyFans page. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Sounds about right. That. <laughs> so she's I out of a job. That. Now she's out of a job again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because she had an OnlyFans page. <laughs> yeah. Sounds her. Mm. Oh, and I want to say wife. congratulations. And shout out to Usher for his whole um, half Super Bowl halftime performance. That was mm-hmm. fine. I thought mm-hmm. it was fine. What did y'all think fire. about Alicia and Keys? Also, yo, she mm-hmm. looked good. But that note, that first note she hit, I don't working. know what that was. Mm. Dude, that wasn't working. That first note she hit was not working. But she looked good. She though. did it. Her body was banging. I said, it oh is. my gosh, she looks good. It she is. Good. But, but that um, voice cracked, and I said, oh no. Yeah, Wait, turn note. this off. But hold on. Man, I was you know they so mad. Now, right? You know they edited it now. So if you was to go view it online, oh, it don't have that no more. They fixed it. <laughs> they fixed it. 
her team. I don't care. I heard what I heard. (laughs) And guess what? Somebody still got the real footage. So you know it. Half the social media still got the real footage. That was going on there, y'all. They said that wasn't it. Y'all did that for what? Yeah, that note wasn't it. But I also want to say, I uh, want to say congratulations to Usher because he also got married over the um, last weekend too I, in Vegas, if I'm not mistaken, by mm-hmm. his, um, I guess his wife, her name Jennifer Go 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 Cheche or something like that. Sure. But yeah, but congratulations to him on that. Mm-hmm. And also speaking of Beyonce. Oh yes. You know she tried to take over um, the Super Bowl <laughs> when she released those first mm-hmm. her commercial, her, her commercial she had the whole commercial she had debuting. Um, her debuting. New- Did you just say that? Nigga, <laughs> <laughs> you will not talk shit about Beyonce and say debuting. Uh. Anyway, <laughs> mm-hmm. she released two new singles, two new country singles. I was here one for is called, too. One is called Texas Hold'em, and the other one is called 16 Carriages, which I really like that song. I, I like that song. That's, that's real good. I love but it. Li- like, literally, after she released those um songs, you know, um the fans went crazy on TikTok. They Ooh. made up a whole line dances for the Texas Hold'em and some more. <laughs> they even showed some, some people on some people on there crying when they was listening to um 16 Carriages. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you know what I irritated see. me about that because <laughs> you know everybody wanted to make the point they're like, oh well, you know, country music that's that white shit, blah blah blah, yeah. and then which I'll get into on my segment, but it was just the whole when she came like you know niggas came up with country music, right? But yeah. I mean, oh yeah, that's like yeah, that's not too much. You that's know what I would want to? You know what I want to be a part of? Like a real like a nick like a back in the day nigga hoedown. Cause you know white people, they get their hands on stuff, and then they water it down. So now you got this corny, like you know, this corny like hoedown shit. Now I want to see the original version of what that looked like. Right. Mm. Oh, I gotta Google that. That's what Google is for. And also speaking of her country, her country music. Um. So one of the, one of her fans went on social media, post on social media about um an Oklahoma um radio station KYKC. Yes. Yep. Uh, they called in to request for um, them to play mm-hmm. um, Beyonce song, and they refused to. They said they, they don't play Beyonce music. We don't play that nigger <laughs> shit here. <laughs> That's right, hard ERs, bitch. So he blasted. So the um, one of her fans blasted them on um, social media, say basically saying that they were being a little racist. I, I want to say mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah, being a little racist <laughs> or whatever you want to say. <laughs> But supposedly they came back and said, well, I mean, the music hasn't been sent to them yet for them to air. So that was their reasoning behind that. <laughs> but eventually, I um, guess they'll play it. Okay. You know they'll play it because they got all this backlash. Uh, they know. Okay, so uh, Nene Leakes. Mm-hmm. She has announced that she will not be returning to um, Real Housewives, even though she hasn't been on there for several seasons. Mm-hmm. But everybody was under the impression that she was coming back because Candy, Candy had just announced that she's no longer um, going to be on Real Housewives, but they bring her Portia back. Portia's mm-hmm. coming back on the show. And so... Nene just uh, recently came out and said that no, she has she is not returning. They have not reached out to her to return yet, so she's not returning. Good. For those who out there that wanted to know that, we don't. Mm, next, we have Dump Trump. <laughs> Dump Trump. Oh, so <laughs> there was a huge loss in court for Dump Trump. The Lucifer. Judge- The judge in Trump's civil business fraud trial in New York just ordered the former president to pay about $355 million in fines. Gee. $355 million. Gee. (laughs) Judge Arthur Ogeron found Trump liable for conspiring to manipulate his net worth in a Friday ruling. In addition to the stiff financial penalty, the judge also barred Trump from serving in top roles at any New York company for three years, and that includes the Trump Organization. Prosecutors were seeking 
a $370 million fine for Trump, accusing Ooh. him and his sons, Donald Trump Jr. and Aaron Trump, of falsifying financial statements and business <clears throat> records as part of repeated and persistent fraud. I Get am up. so happy that Get he, up. like, well, I mean, at the end of the day, well, you know what? Let me not even speak. I'm just going to keep my mouth shut because every time I try to say something, never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> mm -hmm. Somebody try to say something. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. um, and speaking of uh, Taylor Swift, uh, she just donated $100,000 to the family of Lisa Lopez Galvin, who was um, one of the victims that was killed at the Super Bowl parade. Mm -hmm. I know y'all heard about that whole shooting. Oh, we did. And there was I did. Sort of the, yeah, there were several people out. that were shot. And so she donated $100,000 to Lisa Lopez Gow uh, mm. family. And then uh, also um, her, her boo thing. I, I don't know who that is either. He also donated $100,000 to two um, little, I forget their names, guys. It's two little girls that also got shot in the leg. They were sisters. They're in the hospital now, and he donated a hundred thousand dollars to them. Hmm. Also, hmm. so that was nice <clears throat> of them. Okay, <laughs> next up, oh, oh, uh, Monique, her son, Shalon Watkins Jr. What were y'all thoughts on this? <laughs> <laughs> Shalon Watkins Jr., the oldest son of Monique, is addressing his mother's recent comments regarding their relationship. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> he basically, on Tuesday, um, February 13th, he um, took the TikTok to speak on his relationship with his mother. During the almost 10 minute video, he alleged that Monique gave the public a false narrative when she explained on um, the Shay Shay's, um, Shay Shay's club show Gross. Um, that she was hoping for her and Shalon to reconnect. Watkins Jr., alleged that he and his mother are separate because she doesn't care to be his mother no more than she cares no more than he cares to be her son mm. additionally he explained that neither one of them anticipated their feelings on reconciling will change mm, okay from there monique's son went right. on to allege that whatever from <laughs> there <laughs> Monique's son went on to that she informed him of not wanting to focus on motherhood during his childhood. Despite him, despite his being open to forgive that, he added that Monique only acknowledges her faults while only taking accountability at her convenience. You know what? I kind of see that. And I mean, um, I'm just say this. I think that he should have I don't know. What do you think? Do you think that he should have said anything or do you think he should have left it alone? Because, I mean, when you bring somebody's name into it, you then invite yeah. them into the conversation exactly. to speak their truth about exactly. the situation. I exactly. mean, ain't that why? That's why she's on Club Shay Shay to begin with. But mm -hmm. I don't know. I just, when it comes she to. She basically said she don't have a relationship with her family at all. Yeah, she said that on the show too. I remember her saying that, that she really don't have no um, relationship with her family at all and she don't care to. Hmm. Is that it? And that wraps, <laughs> that wraps yeah. up for this week's segment of Chowing with your boy Tigger <laughs> Perfect. All right. So I guess we'll move the show right along. Oh, the Cucasty right up next. But we do believe that President Trump is actually protected under the continuity of government. I believe he's our authentic president and that we are watching a movie. Oh, really? So he's the current president of the United States? I believe that. Like, what is Biden doing then? Well, Biden is, um, it's, we're under a co continuity of government. It's a military um, action. And so they're showing the people in slow motion, the corruption and all the different uh, elements, uh, all the different agencies and the dual system. So they're saying, okay, if you want to steal the election, which they did, this is what you're going to get. So then how is Biden doing? in his role is he the president right now no, no biden is an actor but i think biden is has been gone a long time that's how i feel gone dead gone dead who's the one walking around uh an actor do we know who the actor is uh there's different ones that play him everybody has actors but i know it sounds so far-fetched but they say that they're going to reveal it soon hopefully marcus has your glimpse
without seasoning. Often, white people meet or basically they're introduced to a black person that completely changes every racial stereotype that they've ever had. That's normal. Now, rather than giving up the stereotype in their minds, they create like this little special category for that person and say shit like, well, you're just not like the others. You're not like the other blacks. So instead of just admitting their ideas of black people were simply too narrow or simply too wrong. So it's my belief that this is where a lot of like colorism and stuff comes from. I mean, like the idea that the lighter of us are less dangerous or more safe to be around. The same happens a lot with more of our like relatable blacks or more of our like, um, you know, like more notable blacks like Michael Jackson, where, you know, we all saw it often throughout his career where even the most bigoted person in the world knew at least two black names. They knew Dr. King and they knew Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. So then we jump to Beyonce, who is, in my opinion, this generation's token black for white people, you know, to badly emulate, to try to idolize you know so it makes complete sense to me that they would come up with the you know different ideas and theories on quote unquote how black she is but y'all paint chip non-ass niggas want to try to do the same thing and that shit is just beyond me i do not understand i've seen so many and more than my fair share of criticisms for her skin tone and the look that <clears throat> I just, I can't stand for it anymore. Stupid. Y'all know that I do that fan stand and shit. But when it comes to definitions and expression and expressions of blackness, she is someone that will never be on a questionable list for me. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Think about it. Her art, her wisdom, her depth, all stellar in the way she expresses black culture. Way more poised in celebrating her brown skin and not her brown booty hole like some of y'all like to idolize. Her. You know what I'm saying? But I digress. Like, all I'm saying is that she's light skin. In different lighting, she's naturally going to be lighter. Because, I mean, you know what light does? It highlights things. And y'all sound so damn dumb when you compare her to Kylie or Kim or any of the other Kardashians y'all secretly idolize and blame for the fact that they're not really white. They're Armenian. Mm -hmm. So we can get down with them. <laughs> So whatever counseling y'all need to accept or embrace your blackness should truly be on y'all's list of priorities because that woman does a hell of a lot through her art, through her pockets to celebrate blackness and y'all have the yes. whole right to not like her but y'all's asses simply cannot do anything but respect her grind and respect exactly. who she is as a person. Exactly. So this week I'm pointing my fingers at y'all Negroes for this Mayo sapien type of behavior and I'm challenging you to do better. So we over one of my good girlfriend's house. She having this little get together at her house. She got this big ass house, nicely renovated and everything. And for a long time, we didn't know what the fuck she do for a living. And I personally thought she was fucking white, man. Cause she was always downtown in DC at Constitution Avenue. And I know she wasn't down there for the hot dog stands because the bitch a vegan. And then I knew she wasn't a scammer because the bitch too scared to do shit like that. But come to find out, those was all negative thoughts. And the bitch had a good government job. So we in her big ass house in her big ass basement having a good ass time. So I'm sitting at the bar, ain't drinking shit but cranberry juice. Me and my good girlfriend. So as we sitting there, this dude start coming over towards us, bitch, and his shoulders just a bobbing. I said, oh, he must be one of the lead dancers from the Soul Train show, bitch, okay? Yeah, because this motherfucker can move, and he's sliding too. So my good girlfriend, she on the left of me, he on the right of me, and I'm in the middle, bitch, okay? Two pieces of bread and some bologna. So I noticed he started flirting with my good girlfriend, so I backed up because this is a straight situation, bitch. He's steady talking that smooth shit to her while he bopping his shoulders. So I'm looking at this motherfucker like, oh, this nigga from the 70s. So this smooth cat motherfucker tell the girl behind the bar to make a drink for my good girlfriend. So the girl come back with the drink. So he reaches over me to get the drink. Bitch, when that motherfucker reached over me, my eyes got water in my head, started hurting, and this the way I fall to the flow. Ain't no way this motherfucker grown man smell like this. So I'm looking at her and like, bitch, you don't smell that. But she don't give a fuck. She in La La Land. This bitch ain't been touched from nobody other than herself in years. So you know what the fuck she do? Oh, she took them home anyway. They left mid-party. Party ain't even over. So she calls me the next day. I'm thinking she about to call me and say, Lonnie, I just woke up from a coma. So she says to me, last night was a night. So you know me being the friend that I am. I said to that bitch, bitch, do you have COVID? She said, no, nah, why you say that? Bitch, because your sniff senses are gone. Do your nostrils work?
My girl said to me on that motherfucking phone, uh-uh, I held my breath. I said, the whole time he thought you was moaning. You and that motherfucker. Mm, 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 mm. And he going fast and harder. And you just like, hurry up before I die. Mm. The desperation for funky dick. She said, don't judge. I said, I ain't judging. Bitch, let me go ahead and get the bleach and pine so I'm on my way. She said, see you in 10 minutes. I know my friends. Take us to work. Take us on the go. Take us wherever you go. WRTR Real Talk Radio. We're back. We're black. And the second half of the show is right here. So how y'all doing with the snow? It's basically disappeared. What snow? Now. I ain't got snow. Snow. Oh, it ancient didn't snow outside. for y'all? It was just a ancient little, outside. Little there was a uh, dust in, yeah, please. A dust. There was dust. Oh, no. It was a little bit more here in Baltimore. Oh. Mm. Yeah, it's a little it's bit more, but I mean, it's it's water now because you know Mr. Sun came out. Mm. Uh, how you feeling? How's everybody's week? What was going on? Anything mm. interesting? Anything I mean, other than Miss Lyric dropping. Give me all of you. Give you guys got to hear. We are definitely playing it on <laughs> this show. <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah. play it at the end of the show. Mm, all right. Mm. My week has been okay. Tiresome. I'll say tires. Work wise, work wise, work wise. A lot of training going on. Me training people and me being irritated by people. Aww. You know. But other than that, it's been okay. It's been cool. It's been cool. Nice. It's been cool. Miss Lyric, you've been quiet. You all right? Mm. I'm cooling. Mm. How was your week? You like shit. My week was amazing. <laughs> oh, I know amazing. that's right. Like I said, my release was Valentine's Day. Go ahead and stream that joint on Spotify, Damn Apple Music, God. iTunes, um, Amazon. It's going to be on iHeart in about two weeks. It's going to be also on Tidal in about two weeks. All the music platforms, Pandora, you can find it. Look at look me up at Larry Bravado and you can find my picture. And yes. listen to my song. Yes. yes. And them yes. streams up, baby. <laughs> oh, I hear you. I know what you <laughs> All right. Oh, so okay. I found a fun new list for y'all because y'all, for some reason, love sending us these ridiculous listings. So I thought this one particularly helpful because it's about to be like warmer outside again. And y'all love to snatch them garments oh, off and show man. out. Well, you know, it's getting closer to the time that it's about to be warmer. And, you know, it's about to be March. Niggas are gonna, and people are going to be starting to snatch off their garment <laughs> and stuff, you know, and show out. Can't so I'm going to keep you in the know of where you may want to keep it on and be a little bit more precautious about who you share than show the tell and show and tell your secrets to. Because, um, mm. yeah, I'm going to do that with the top list or the top cities in the America with the highest STD rates in 2024. So, oh, yeah. Are oh, you snatching them garments off, girl? You might want to uh, take a look. Because they are saying, <clears throat> I'm going to start with the top 10. Coming in at number 10, Norfolk, Virginia. Mm. Coming in at number 9, Washington, D.C. DMV on this list. Keep your pants mm. on. Uh, number 8, Little Rock, uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. Sorry. <laughs> Number seven, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Number six, New Orleans. Ain't that wow. your party city, uh, Ticket Man? Don't do That's it. That's one of your party cities. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Uh, number five. <laughs> number five is Philly. <laughs> oh, God. Number four is Baltimore. <laughs> uh, exactly. 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 <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Number three is Columbia, South Carolina. Number two is Jackson, Mississippi. And number one, Memphis. Can you believe Where, that? I, I'm confused. Where is Atlanta? Yeah, not in the Atlanta top ten. Been, and Atlanta should have been number one. It's actually, I have the list all the way up to 17, and Atlanta is not even on this list of 17. That's crazy. Coming right. in at 11, you got Cleveland, right. Greensboro, Charlotte, what? Charleston, South Carolina, San Francisco, Jacksonville, and Miami. I guarantee you somebody from Atlanta made that list. Wow. Hmm. Because ain't no way. Ain't Just... no way. All right. Well, mm-hmm. let's move it right along. Waffles up next. My only commentary on Beyonce's new music is. Stop inviting them to metaphorical cookouts based on white mediocrity because, baby, those songs weren't out a full 24 hours before the microaggressions came tumbling in. 
And it's not surprising because do y'all remember when they showed their asses over her performance at the CMAs that year? Remember when they refused to classify Old Town Road as a country song when Lil Nas X first dropped it? And now country stations are having to be pressured to play two very country songs by a globally popular artist. And this is what I mean by microaggression because those songs do not have country influences. They're country ass songs by a country ass lady. And it's internal too, because I've been seeing black folks say that this feels inauthentic. They feel that she's swerving into Taylor Swift's lane. A black woman got on this app and actually said that. And I get it because it's a semi new direction from a long established artist, but it also feels like y'all just don't understand the variety and the history of black people and music. Black musicians are foundational to country music and its reputation as a white genre is purposeful. And while Beyonce will be okay, I mean, she's Beyonce. There are other black people in country music who may not get their full acknowledgement within the genre. So the next time y'all see a white person vibe into black music and you want to let it leave your fingertips that they are invited to the cookout, consider whether you be invited to the honky tonk. Bye. Why do you have roaches? The why files. Why do my children hate me? WRTR Real Talk Radio. Why do my vagina burn? The truth is out there. Explaining the unexplained. We're answering why to the questions you want to know by taking your tweets at WRTR Radio. We take your emails at WRTR Radio at gmail.com and we take your Facebook messages over on our Facebook page. Just look us up. WRTR Real Talk Radio. This is the Y Files. Remember, the truth is out there. Um, who's on? How you going? Go. <clears throat> Yo, why are they out here stealing? <laughs> Roadside assistant tow trucks now. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Ye- yesterday. This happened yesterday. In Belleville, mm. uh, uh, Belleville, Maryland. What? Bel- it was all over the news. All over the news. It's they stole news. a tow uh, truck. Rose, yes. So basically, what happened was. <laughs> so basically, what happened was. Um, is the um, the driver of a state highway administrator administration tow truck went to someone's assistant at a park and ride off of Interstate 95 in Beltsville, Maryland. Mm-hmm. When someone took off in the truck, <laughs> somebody jumped in his truck and took off. Are you serious? Took off in the truck. This <laughs> um, police was called to the scene. They was chasing. They was they was literally chasing after um, whoever was driving this this tow truck. They um, chased them through, um, like I said, Beltsville, Maryland, into D.C. So some suburban parts of D.C. Mm-hmm. and um, other places. This this tow truck hit several cars. Hit several cars. Wow. Ran ran the pole because they tried to the, the um, police. They tried to block him in too. He rammed the shit out of them, drank <laughs> one of the police trucks down the street. They were hmm. chasing him for a while. They, and he was like, he hit in all kinds of cars. It was all over the news. And they had a um a chopper in the air was filming everything. Filming wow. everything. It's actually a smart crime if you think about it. Like if you were going to steal a tow truck, I would steal a tow truck to then go and tow like other cars. Because then ain't nobody really going to look at you for stealing a car because you are in a tow truck. Let me not mm-hmm. give y'all niggas ideas. Never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. How bad. Yo. <laughs> so that's why, no, why, why, why are y'all here stealing tow trucks now? Because the truth is out there. Because they don't want their car towed. Dude hit like 20 cars. He had to hit like uh, like 20 cars. Jesus. Ramming them. Ramming he probably them. got tired of being towed. He said, fuck sure that. He, he, hit one car. He, went, he hit one car that flew into the intersection and got smashed by another car. What? Damn. Yes, it's crazy. Damn. You, you got you got to watch the video. Go I'd rather not. Video. It's crazy. It's funny to hear the at, narrative. At, um, yeah, I was at Crafty Crab when the, and, and it was up on the um, TV screens and everybody was glued to the TV. They were like, wow. oh my God. Each time he hit another car, oh my God. Oh my God. It was crazy. It was crazy. But they wow. finally they finally got him. Um, Cause he, I guess he tried to, he ran off the side of a road and I guess he got stuck wherever he, um, ran off the side of the road that he got, he ended up getting stuck. 
Jesus. And the police officers, they all um, jumped out of the cars and surrounded him, broke the windows of the tow truck to get to him and pull him out and everything. Mm. That's crazy. But the that's truth is why. definitely out there. <laughs> yeah, that's my why. <laughs> all right. Me or you next, Miss Lear. Why people? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Praying with me on social media. Right. Now, okay. Why do people feel like when it's time for them to do what's best for them, it's all good. But when you choose to do what's best for you and your right. livelihood, it's, it's a problem. Hmm. Hmm. Why do y'all do that? Because it's, it's not about you. It's not about you. It's about them. That's crazy <laughs> to me. That's crazy to me. Because you're so caught up in worrying about this, that, and the third, but you will leave your friend out to dry. Mm-hmm. But once they concern themselves about them, it's an issue. It's an issue. Why do y'all, Why do people do that? It blows um, my mind. Selfishness, mm-hmm. actually. I was going to say because the truth is out it's there, self, but no, the self, truth self. is right there. It's selfish. Yeah, you're absolutely People right. are self. very selfish. Mm-hmm. People only think about themselves. And it's sad. <laughs> and it's sad. But then you want someone to call you a friend. That's not mm-hmm. That's not how you treat your friends, though. Ew. You can be selfish with them. It's a give and take. It's a two-way, two-way not a one-way street. Mm-hmm. And so... I'm kind of over that type of shit. I have yeah. little situations going on, and I'm over it. Yeah, I choose not to deal with people like that because I see them for I'm they over are. it. Like, I'm uh, over it. I see you. I see you. you. Right. Because if you're going to do that, then shit, I'm going to do what's best for me, too. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then it's okay. Because it's not, you know what I'm saying? People tend to forget, like, it's not they're not the only ones with families and they're not the only ones with things that they have, you know, going on. Mm-hmm. Everybody got shit going on, but you yeah, never know how deep somebody else's shit is. Cause you don't care to ask because you're selfish as shit. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> the truth is always out there. It's right there. Actually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. This why comes from Devin. His screen name was, it has a North Carolina zip code. So I'm going to assume he's from North Carolina. He wants to know why do people sit at red lights and pick their noses? Because they nasty as shit. I'm just looking out my window dead at them. Have you ever seen somebody eat it? Yep, actually. What? I have not seen seen that. It It is nasty. I have gagged at the wheel of my car. Gagged. (laughs) Stop playing. What is you doing? I be wanting to. But yep. people are crazy, so I don't. But I be wanting to roll the window down. You nasty bitch. What the <laughs> fuck is you doing? Like, you eating boogers and shit? The fuck? I throw some quarters at you. Don't get you a happy meal or some shit. The fuck is wrong with you? Ain't nobody that bad off where you got to be eating I've boogers. Seen it. I've mm. seen it. I know. I have seen it. Times is hard. Season up the right man. booger. From it might be me. No. Times ain't never that hard. From the other people. Mm. I've seen other people do. Mm. I'm just saying. When y'all season up the right booger, it might make a meal. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, Why? No, because bro. the truth is no, out bro. there. No, bro. Mm-hmm. Be no, knuckles bro. deep. We knuckles deep in that I nose. Like when kids be having like that Smack runny it, nose Smack. and stuff, and it be all on their lips and shit, and I be yeah, looking at their mom like, "Why the fuck you ain't wiping their like nose yeah. and shit? You just mm-hmm. let them just it dribbles down in their mouth and ugh." Oh, so uh, nasty, uh, I don't like no. that. That's mm. a pet peeve of mine for real. Mm. Marcus, you know damn well when you was younger, your, your nose used to run like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, ticket man, you yeah. know good and well you used to eat paint chips. What's Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> and that wraps it up for this week's Y Files. We're always answering. <laughs> Why for you? At WRTR Radio on Twitter. <laughs> we are taking your emails. WRTR Radio at gmail.com and on Facebook. Get us up over there. Come for me. How dare thee? Huh. <laughs> what up? What up? And, he huh. to, and he used to inhale glue. In the paper bag. In the paper bag. Tony would peel his. I'm sorry, man would. Tigger man would peel his toenails off and eat them. Damn, come on, yo. 
Yeah, Come that was you. Real Come bad. on, you. Yeah. <laughs> Doing too much. Really? <laughs> crunch and crunch. Crunch and crunch. Love at first bite. Oh, oh my God. God. I hate Whatever. y'all. Yeah, Whatever. I'm just saying. News to make just you like, nauseous. Just like he used to dig in his ear, pull that wax out and lick it. Don't do it. Mm-hmm. Ew, mm-hmm. stop, for real. Y'all gonna make me say what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> not, what you, <laughs> not what you taking your sharp nail and digging in between your teeth what? and smelling it. Stop it. Oh, we don't like that. Oh uh-huh. Next up is <laughs> news to make you nauseous. Because they <laughs> nauseate me right the fuck now. What evidence do you have to bolster the idea that this isn't just a fair prosecution based on violations of the law? They have no evidence to support it. The he's indictments trying, lay out. trying to impeach him so many times, and he doesn't get impeached. Well, he got impeached, but this isn't impeachment. This is prosecution. What? This is unrelated to impeachment. This is a prosecution. What? They, 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 it's because they don't want him to win. They know he's going to win again. But... In, for example, the classified documents indictment, it lays out violations of the law as being alleged in the indictment. Uh-huh. And so you're saying those don't exist or they don't actually violate the law or what's going on there? I don't think they exist. So like the audio tape of Trump saying that he has a classified document and it's, I could have declassified it, but I can't anymore because well, I'm no longer president. What that Biden's, do- Biden's son's been doing with Ukraine? Well, there hasn't been evidence to prove that something illegal went on of in between Joe hasn't. Biden and of Hunter Biden. There hasn't, because he, that's Biden. But Hunter Biden did something illegal with the gun. He's being prosecuted for it. Okay. And now, news to make you nauseous on WRTR Real Talk Radio. Let's go. These are some of the stories you might not read about in the New York Times, the Washington Post, or the Wall Street Journal. It's news to make you nauseous. I am Marcus Smoot. My name is Miss Lyric Bravado. And it's your boy Tickle Man. And this is news to make you nauseous. Say what, scorned lover. Say what? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> and I'm only saying that because I'm not sure if she's really from this city. But we're gonna go right on in. Right. A video was posted on X, formerly known as Twitter, on February 14th, 2024. Mm-hmm. Fuck you, he says oh. at the start of the clip, which was posted on Reddit with the caption. Girl trashes boyfriend's apartment due to not getting anything for her on Valentine's Day. Oh, really? Really? As the woman walks through the apartment, viewers are given a glimpse into the complete destruction of the apartment, where the woman appears to have ruined many large pieces of furniture. The woman's Uh, image starts off as some inconvenient mess as she starts throwing things on the floor. And what it appears to be pieces of bed linen littering the floor and the bench and the kitchen benches. She yeah. then pans around the kitchen with food opened and smeared on the floors and appliances oh. and the freezer door left wide open. She also left um, some unexplained. Ew. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even like where this is going. When you say unexplained, absolutely not. <laughs> Some unexplained residue left on oh. bathroom mirrors. Bro. Multiple nasty. containers were left out on the kitchen bench as well. Things dumped outside of the bathroom. And the bedroom is the extent of the woman's carnage where she has ripped, completely ripped the, both headboards and both bedrooms completely to shreds. Wow. And I saw oh. the video. And when I tell you, she went wow. ham, egg, and cheese on that man's apartment. Because wow. she did not get a Valentine's Day. Because she didn't get nothing from him on Valentine's Day. And that she did crazy. all of this shit while he was at work. That's the game, my fellas. <laughs> I said, wow. <laughs> As you should. Uh, stop playing. me because I would have called some peoples over there and uh, exactly. mm-hmm, handle that. Because yep. what? Mm-hmm. Yep. You ain't going to come up here and fuck my shit up. Exactly. Certainly won't. All right. That say what? Crazy. Marion County, Florida. A 28 year old woman has found herself behind bars after she allegedly smacked her mama in the face with grits during an oh, argument about pizza. I'm done. 
So basically, the woman was arrest, uh, arrested and cha- uh, charged. What is up with my language today? The woman was arrested and charged with battery after an incident that unfolded. Basically, what happened was the woman was homeless and she was sleeping on the streets. She hit her mama up, was like, hey, girl, can I have a place to stay? Mama was like, sure, baby, come on over. Can I on in here? And she came in and she went to sleep. And that next morning she got up. You know, rinsed herself off, got the crust out of her eyes, went in the kitchen Mm-mm. and was like, hey, I want pizza. Mama was like, nah, we not having pizza. We <laughs> having grits. grits. <laughs> <laughs> she took them grits. She said, oh, we having grits on this. She took them grits and right upside Mama's head. That's crazy. So that then, hold on. That's not even the funniest part of the story. The story gets funnier where the police call. You know, the police are called. They come in. So basically, the daughter is like, oh, I don't know what she's talking about. We got into it about pizza, and she acted like she was going to call the cops on me. So she picked up that little, uh, <laughs> she picked up that pot of grits and hit herself in the face with it <laughs> to make it look like I did it. Mm-hmm. I cops were like, Oh, it, oh, did that? Did she? <laughs> yeah. So, long story short, it led to an investigation, and old girl, the daughter, is behind bars. That's crazy. Yeah. You're That's up, Tigger. All right, y'all ready for this? Are we? Say what, Pennsylvania? Say what? Mm. A Pennsylvania college professor is facing multiple charges after he was not only caught being freaky with his dog. Bro, <laughs> I'm hanging up. <laughs> but he also is caught being freaky at a public state park. His Themis, his name is Themis. Themis. Masakas, Themis Masakas. Sixty four. Sure. Was caught was caught on tape sticking lollipops and tree branches in his butt. Gross. Along with masturbating inside lakes and on. Defecate, uh, and defecating on mountainsides. What? <laughs> did, did she? Did she leave? <laughs> no, she didn't leave. She just put her finger oh. over the uh, microphone so she yeah. can't hear you. <laughs> Themis was originally arrested in June 2023 after he was caught with his pants down, forcing his dog to lick his booty hole at the Rock Rock State Forest. Licking booty <laughs> hole too? I have to take a break. I can't oh. listen to it no more. Yeah. <laughs> he was even attempting to record it. On his tablet. Reco- you had at an time, audience? Jesus. Listen, listen. At the time of the arrest, he begged the ranger to shoot him because he knew his life was over due to him getting caught. He told the ranger he told the rangers that he did it to blow off steam. <laughs> I'm done. I bet you did. See I'm what you done. did there, gross I'm ass. Dead. You don't he said, I'm done. I'm dead. You don't understand. I do it to blow off steam. This is he was quoted as telling them in despair. What do I have to do to get you to shoot me? I need to die. After this, no, incident, I can't, Themis, I can't disagree. <laughs> after this incident, Themis' house was searched, and investigators found even more disturbing videos on his electronic tablet. It seemed like Themis was getting freaky all through the parks because the video showed uh. him in multiple locations masturbating and sticking random items in his butt, including a lollipop, tree branches, and co- and a control handle. This wow. disgraced professor also allegedly defecated in public areas of Roth Rock State Forest and in a maintenance area next to DC NR equipment, as well as smeared bodily fluids on a uh. glass table and at least camp <laughs> onwards, state police have said. Did you say so, a control handle? How yeah. does that work? So you got money for know. a PS5, but not a dildo? Please stop this. Listen, listen. Listen, so he is behind bars right now. I'm sure he needs to be <laughs> he needs to be evaluated. That's <laughs> no, that's a serious thing. I'm not even gonna speak that's on crazy. that because that's some extra ish. Go ahead. News to make you nauseous. 
Yes, it is. And if you want these and more nauseating <laughs> news stories, make sure you follow us on Twitter at WRTR Radio. Hit me up. I'm at M A R C U S S M O O T. That's Marcus Smoot across all social networks. My name is Lyric Bravado. You can find me on every social media platform there is, except for OnlyFans Perfect. and except for Pornhub and all that nasty shit. I uh, leave that to somebody else. Also, right. again, you can find my music on Spotify, Apple yes. Music, Amazon Music, iTunes. Go download. Give me all of you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Give me all of you. And you yes. can find your boy. T- and you can find your boy Ticker Man on Facebook at Tony Ticker Man Nelson, and on um, Instagram and X, formerly known as Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ticker Man 82 and of course you can find me on OnlyFans alright let's wrap up this show with Real Talk up next we're going to discuss horrible Valentine's Day experiences yep that's up next so I was born a female and that's never going to change I will always be a female and that's okay here's where it gets confusing although I was born female that does not mean that my identity has to align that way and what I mean by that is My biology is female, meaning I do have XX chromosomes. I don't got a Y in there. Never did, never will, never going to happen for me. But my identity does not have to align in the way of my XX chromosomes. My identity can be a man. So when people reach out to me and say, you will always be a female, you will always be a female, can't nothing change that. You're not telling me anything new, sweetie, because I know that and I am aware of it and I embrace it and I love that about me. It's okay. That's what makes me transgender. I'm not out here saying I was born male because I wasn't. The human body is so complex and your mind can identify in so many different ways through the way you were raised, through just society in general, and through your own personal development. And mine just so happens to not correlate with my anatomy and my XX chromosomes. So yes, I am a female. I'm a female. I'm a female. I am and the boat. I am a female. <laughs> Keeping it 100. It's real talk. On WRTR Real Talk Radio. We keep it real. All right. We're black into the cornerstone of our show. It's real talk. And this week, since so Valentine's Day just passed, and it's a thing of where with the good comes the bad. We've all had that one horrible valentine's day experience that has resonated or made us say hmm i'll remember that for the years coming so just wanted to kind of share some of those with you all and well you know share some of y'all's i'm actually pulling up the list but while i do one of y'all can go first and talking about your experiences i don't i don't do valentine's day never Mm-mm. i don't do, do not. valentine's day i don't celebrate it is there a reason i just don't know it's it's, hmm. it's it's overrated. I used to think that. Well, I don't know. I guess it's symbolic. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's symbolic for some people. I get it, though. I mean, you know, as far as that take. Miss Lyric, what you got? I don't really have no horror stories. I've heard other people who have her, um, had horror stories. I mean, I don't count, like, high school shit. Everybody Ooh, tell me one of those. Oh, <laughs> Everybody oh, done went through back. some some heartbreak or disappointment you know what i'm saying back when they were a kid that would be perfect because i know for me i got some doozies back in valentine's mm-hmm. day mm-hmm. yeah so mm-hmm. i was dating like when i was in you know high school and stuff you know you date different people and all this other stuff this was before I, you know actually what came out and everything so mm-hmm. i was dating this girl in uh high school and for that va- for valentine's day she wanted to, you know, get it in. So, you know, she invited your boy over there and, you know, proceeded for us to try to get it in. And well, you know, I was not impressed. I was not happy. I was not happy with my experiences. And yeah, I ended up leaving. So then she went and told everybody in school. She told everybody in school that basically she was trying to give me the pussy and I didn't want it. I was like, oh, no. Nah. And I mean, it was a thing. Okay. So it was Some several favorite. factors. It was several factors. So, I mean, it was, you know, it was some hygienic things. It was, you know, just experiences. I'm done. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that, Miss Lyric? You got the tea. You got I'm a lemon. Like- 
Continue. No, I mean, it was just that. And I'm like, I'm sitting there like, okay, so hmm, here You've we are. You've never huh? told me this story before. This is my no, real reaction. I haven't. This is back in, you know, high school and stuff. I didn't care anything about back then, but you, know, you met me in my 30s. So, yeah, yes, this is one. So, there you go. That is one of what? my most uh, horrible experiences. <clears throat> also, you know, other stuff with, you know, me not, you know, necessarily liking people in school. And yeah. because I've always been a sapiosexual. So, for me, I'm attracted to your intellect more than I am you physically. Like, mm -hmm. you're not even going to, if you don't appeal to me intellectually, I'm not even going to look at you on a, you know, what your body looks like. I'm just not. Mm -hmm. I've always been that way. And that's the first thing. So, <laughs> I don't know. It takes me a minute to even look in that direction, anyways. There you go. Well, I experienced Valentine's heartache. Oh, no. I was like, <laughs> how old was I? I was like maybe 16, 17 or something. Mm -hmm. And you know <laughs> the meme? And I laugh at it because I was like, yo, that was fucking me when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Valentine is a meme going on, going around that says Valentine's Day is the day you find out if you're Barbara or Shirley. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Oh. And this was before, you know, we was younger. There wasn't no like side chick day. Right. Or any of that. I found out that, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying, who I was, you know, <clears throat> talking to was dealing with somebody else. Mm. So me, how I am, I'm very much um a person who gives people the benefit of the doubt when it comes right. to their word. Right. And if you tell me something, I expect you to keep it because when I tell you something, <laughs> unless there's like a huge like issue and I, I I can't be there like physically, like something really happened, I'm gonna keep yeah. my word. I don't mm -hmm. promise, I don't make promises to people and then don't keep them. Mm -hmm. So this guy I was talking to, he was we playing this shit we were supposed to go to dinner you know what i'm saying my mom approved of him all right like such a like a womanizer and a manipulator i didn't i didn't use that verbiage back then because i was young but now looking okay. back i'm like oh he was like he thought he was like god's gift to women or something hmm. but my mom approved of him because you know he was doing all that player shit right to being a gentleman you want to speak to my parents, being real proper, you know what I'm saying? Uh, knocking on the door instead of beeping a horn, you know, that type of shit, opening the doors mm -hmm. at that age. Yep, before they released them into the world to become fuck Yeah. Mm -hmm. He stood me up on Valentine's Day. Oh! You know, oh, yep. I was about to... Uh, I waited, I waited, I waited, and then around 10, I was just like, fuck him, this, that, and the third. The next day... <clears throat> He came and I was Bro. like, What are you here for? Like, I was mm. carrying him. I was like, Because I don't like that. You could have called, even if something right. happened, like you, you changed your mind or whatever the case may be. Just let right. me know so I'm not feeling dumb just sitting there waiting for you. Right. This motherfucker brought me flowers and a card. And my, it's so funny because like a couple years ago it was like in my mom's storage like in the basement we found the card like I had kept it and <laughs> it said I'm so in like with you I'm so in like with you I'm so in like with you in the car I remember that shit and he brought mm -hmm. me flowers and he tried to say that he had to do something with his family or some shit like that and I was like well I called you phone was going straight to voicemail you didn't text me like mm, I'm not really feeling that so I, I I stopped dealing with with him for a long time now and it took him a long time to regain my trust because one thing about it is you don't do that you don't mm -hmm. do that you don't do that don't play with me don't play with me because I'm not gonna play with you like mm -hmm. be fair I'm gonna give you fair treatment you're gonna give me fair treatment it's a two-way street so once I see you doing something different and you want to move different, I'm going to move different. Don't get mad when I move different, though. Mm, Patriots. That's exactly what started happening. I moved different. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All yeah, right. That was, that was the one and only time I ever, you know, felt 
uh, the myth of Cupid's arrow, if you will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a couple of times there? I should. Okay, it was cute. Mm-hmm. A couple of times I should have dodged that arrow. Anyway, mm, this girl said. <laughs> this die. girl said. This girl said. I've been seeing a guy for about two months, and we hadn't had the talk yet about whether or not we were an official couple. He asked mm-hmm. if I wanted to go out on Valentine's Day, though he just said Friday. I was like, "Yeah, great." Assuming he knew that was Valentine's Day, I got. I got a blowout and she said I got a blowout and dressed up and then waited at the sushi place for 45 minutes. I could just feel everyone giving me sad eyes for being stood up. So finally he oh. got in. No good excuse for being late, no flowers. I busted his balls about it. And he right. totally panicked because he had no idea it was Valentine's Day. Mm. He nah. wound up he wound Let me up tell giving you what me, he, he, she said, he wound up giving me that I'm not in a good place to commit to anybody right now. <laughs> you know what he did? He took his real bitch out before he came to see you. That's what happened. And he was mad he had to leave her to come to you at the sushi place. That's what the fuck happened. Oh. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Wow. He wasn't just late just for no reason. Bitch, right. he took his main girl out. Exactly. And, 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 and then left he you. To your ass at right. the sushi joint, down, down to the sushi place. bar. <laughs> You had you, mm-hmm. you were sitting down there by yourself with a For fresh new blowout blow that out. now smells like fish heads. Girl. And, okay, sure, girl. Uh, <laughs> now that I'm grown, I wouldn't have even waited five fucking minutes. I would have been mm-hmm. out and <laughs> right. see you later, bitch. <laughs> you ain't finna do that. You yeah, not doing I'm that. 45 minutes. 45 uh, minutes and you just sat there. Right, girl, right. you better than me. Mm-hmm. You better than me. Cause yeah. what? <clears throat> Huh? Five minutes. Even, and didn't even get a call that he's gonna be late. Nothing. Bitch, I'm giving you the exact same time that they give them DoorDash, motherfucker. Five minutes. There you go. That's all you get. No, not a second more, not a second less. Uh, <laughs> oh and that wraps God. up this real talk yes. for this week on WRTR Real Talk Radio. All right, yes, y'all. Yes, yes. I guess we out. We're gonna wrap up the show here. I'm Marcus Smoot. My name is Miss Lid Bravado. And it's your boy Tigger Man. Remember, stay black and stop questioning everybody else's blackness. Period. We'll holler at y'all on next week's episode. Oh, and President's Day, seriously. A holiday that celebrates (laughs) that celebrates (laughs) the mofos that move themselves and they white families into a house Mm -hmm. they force niggas to build. And then mm. y'all need a day? That wasn't enough? You needed a day to celebrate. A white, a white house. Fuck that. A Fuck white that holiday. Elevator. In this short-ass month. Like, in this short-ass month, y'all made about us. Y'all tried to make it about us. We still got to celebrate y'all's awful asses. All right, anyway. <laughs> I want my coin. I know that's right. Playing us uh, out is Miss Lyric Bravado with Give Me All of You right here on WRTR Real Talk Radio. We'll holla at y'all next week. All right.
it don't matter how far Cause we could Go our separate ways But we'll always come back What's meant to be is destiny No one can argue with facts Keep your heart safe You know what I'm saying is true Remain loyal like no other baby Give me all of you So just yeah, 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 yeah. I can't deny love's a beautiful thing And what we have is everlasting You're all I need, so I said I do And you'll never have to question how I feel I about you This week's show featured talent from TikTok creators Chris the Author, I Am Lonnie B, Still Shun 78, Luke Beasley Official, and our very own Lyric Bravado. 